In today's video, we're going to chat through why the likes of BBC, why these card graders, why these card manufacturers essentially suck in the modern age and why they're sort of stuck, you know, in the mindset of 10, 15 years ago with regards to the offering and the value they're giving to us as customers within the hobby. Now, you're going to want to hear what I have to say about each of these specific examples, so please stay tuned. I do this for a living. I look at business processes in detail on a daily basis, so I understand, albeit these are different industries, the logic and, and understanding I get from a risk appetite perspective, a risk mitigation perspective, and when I say those things, I mean, you know, things that businesses put in place to make sure mistakes don't happen, are essentially transferable to every industry, right? So let's talk through them, and then down in the comments below, you can share your thoughts. Now, the first thing I want to touch on is baseball card exchange, and funnily enough, I spoke about this about seven months ago when the Logan Paul stuff first came up, and this is what I actually had to say at the time, and what I think hasn't happened, and why it means that there's very likely... I shouldn't say very likely, there's probably a greater chance than not that there's authenticated boxes out there that are fake. Which is pretty interesting if you factor in what we now know about baseball card exchange with regards to the 286 boxes of Flea that have popped up recently. It's been proven to be true. And the, thing, the reason I wanted to speak about this again, right, because it's not as simple as people just saying, you know, baseball card exchange shouldn't have graded or authenticated that Pokemon case, I should say. They shouldn't have done these things with these 86 Flea boxes. When I see these things, because I look at it through the lens of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, it speaks to more underlying issues within their process. When you've got a strong and robust authentication process or review process, that stuff can be applied to anything, okay? So when they've applied it to something they've never done before, and then they've made those mistakes, it highlighted to me that their business process was really, really poor. And if I quickly show you an example business process, which is what I showed in the original video, you know, this is a flow chart. This is something typically we would build when we're going to our clients to understand their key business processes. This is essentially the flow of information. I'm sure most of you guys would understand what a flow chart is, pretty self-explanatory. This C1 over here is the control or what they do to review the specific things on hand. And I put this together based on how I thought their process would work. And that highlighted to me that their controls, their review process is not good enough. It doesn't matter, you know, whether they've done the Pokemon case or not, right? Their business should have enough things in place to catch question marks over these kinds of things. And the fact that it didn't do that for the Pokemon case and then didn't do that again for these boxes of 86 Flea where they've maybe seen some tampering, they've maybe seen some things that don't make sense from a sequence perspective, but they've still proceeded to wrap the box, it starts to raise all these kinds of questions and speaks to why they as a business are maybe stuck 10, 15 years ago, like I said in the intro to this video. And that's okay, right? But the problem is, in today's day and age, the amount of money that people pay to get a box authenticated by BBC is a lot of money. The amount of money that people are paying to get a card graded is a lot of money. And it's like, guys, you can't, you know, keep your process existing to how it was, try and maximize your profits, but then charge us a fortune, but then not give us the same amount of value, right? And that's where the problem is. And this is why I keep talking about these kinds of things, because it seems to be pretty, you know, consistent across each of these businesses within the hobby, which is really disappointing. It also flows into things like these card graders because it's not as simple, as I said, for BBC. It's not as simple as just saying they shouldn't have graded the Pokemon case. Their business and processes are robust enough. That is irrelevant, right? They should have enough review in place to make sure that they can do what they haven't done before because they need to maintain a certain level of risk appetite, right? A certain level of, you know, comfort. Eventually, that what they're doing is okay. And that was very clear that it didn't happen in that case and it spoke to underlying issues with them as a business. But like I said, this also happens with card graders. It's not as simple as saying, okay, Daniel, PSA and BGS, you know, yes, they've made lots of mistakes in the last few months, but that's primarily because they had to hire so many new staff to keep up with demand. It's like, okay, you can say that, but you can't just say that and brush it aside, right? That's that's a really bad thing, right? Because those businesses should have enough matrices, or matrices, I should say, not matrices, in place. And what do I mean by that? that? I mean, like, they should have enough guidance for new starters to come in and make sure that they know what they're doing. And very clearly what's happening at these card graders is that, you know, mistakes are happening across the board. It's not just restricted to new new graders coming in and not being able to be as experienced as some of the previous graders. It's not just happening on the grading element. They're also making mistakes with, you know, labels being incorrect, cards being upside down, cards being sent to the wrong customers. You've got these issues across the board, which highlights to me that PSA, BGS, SGC have had these issues too, that across the board, their process is not very robust. And, you know, the risk appetite that they have is quite low. Like you would think, that when somebody new comes in, you're going to have guides that people can follow. You're going to have speak key steps or key reviews that happen throughout the process to make sure you know that mistakes don't happen. The fact that these mistakes have happened, you know, across the board is really bad and speaks to their you know almost ineptitude as a business. And like I said, I'm using a lot of big words here, but I do this for a living. Okay, so for me to make these assumptions and assessments from the outside looking in, it probably speaks to actually some pretty significant issues at these businesses, and it's really disappointing to see because they should be doing better. These are not the kinds of mistakes you'd want to see. If the process was robust, yes, you'd still see mistakes come through because 
look at the volume of cards they're pumping through, right? But the fact that it's happening everywhere is a little bit concerning. You would almost expect them to have more reviews in place. Yes, you've got a lot of new starters. Yes, you're pumping through a lot of product, but you should have sufficient review in place to make sure these mistakes don't happen. So when we say it's just because they're doing a huge, getting through a huge backlog, it's like, no, that's not, that's not big enough. The problem is a lot bigger than that. Same with BBC. You can't just say they shouldn't have graded that case. It's a lot bigger than that. It speaks to, you know, a really poor risk appetite across the business as a whole, which then speaks to more concerns around them operating as a business long-term because it just shows that it's a bit of a clown show. And like I said, at the very start, these businesses are basically stuck in the mindset of 10, 15 years ago when trading card collecting was exactly that. It was just there to be trading trading card collecting. It's a hobby. But now you've got so much money. You've got, you know, collectors, you've got flippers, you've got dealers, you've got all these people investing in things. It's There's so much money right now. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. I'd be very comfortable in saying. So you can't get away with this sort of basic service that they're giving. These businesses were started by individuals that like to collect cards, okay? So they just wanted to be part of something they loved. So they came in, implemented these things back then and haven't really gone and grown with the times. They have in terms of what they're charging us, okay? But they haven't done the same thing from an uplift in terms of their internal control environment and all this other sort of lingo that I'm using. But they basically haven't done a good enough job to uplift the value they're giving us as customers. And again, this is not just limited to authenticators like BBC or card graders. It also applies to card manufacturers like Panini, like Tops, right? Like Upper Deck. You can't just say these guys like PSA, like BGS have issues because, or have QC issues because of the volume they're putting through. It's like, that's not, that's not good enough. It speaks to, you know, wider problems out of these organizations. The fact that something like this can slip through and be, and be deemed okay, because they've sort of leaned into it, right? Graders and card manufacturers have leaned into the, into the volume. They're happy to keep it going. It's like, what does that mean? What does that tell you as a customer about their business as a whole? So I didn't go into as much detail as I wanted to because I don't want to lose you guys, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on these because like I said, when you're saying these things about these businesses, don't just say it and brush it aside. I know some of you are not doing that, but when people in the comments, you'll see what well, they'll say like BBC, they shouldn't have graded that case. That's where their downfall was. It's like these card graders, they're just grading too much. They shouldn't have hired all these new people to keep up with demand. Like you can't say that and brush it aside because it really undermines the true issues at these businesses. What they're doing, you know, is not good enough. And it's very disappointing to see. And they continue to charge us as customers, you know, top dollar, give us incredibly poor customer service. And then people still buy into it. And it's like, guys, come on. Like we need to be starting to stand up for ourselves, ask these kinds of questions because these problems speak to significant underlying problems at these businesses with regards to their control environment and their risk appetite. Just to give you some context, control environment means, you know, all the reviews, all the policies and procedures that these companies have in place to make sure that mistakes don't happen. You know, seeing these mistakes happen at these three different entities, right? BBC, PSA, BGS, Panini, so on and so forth. It tells me they've got really, really poor control environments, okay? And it's just, it's really easy for me to see because like I said, I do this on a daily basis. I look at these key business processes on a daily basis at these large financial institutions, and like I said, that stuff is transferable. It doesn't matter what entity you're looking at. When you can understand risk appetite, when you can understand risk mitigation, that can be applied to any industry. And me seeing these organizations and how they're handling it is, is, is really poor. They need to do better. So like I said, let me know your thoughts on any of these down in the comments below, but please do me a favor. And when you're looking at these problems, start looking at it from that lens. Start asking the question, okay, but what does this mean for the rest of them or the rest of their business offering to us as customers? Because, you know, you can't just look at these things in isolation. They speak to bigger problems at these places. And I think, you know, they need to be doing better. They're stuck 10, 15 years ago when the hobby was just a hobby. Now it's much more than a hobby and it's not good enough. So please share your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.